It's an all-American scene. A game of basketball in a quiet Californian street. This is where the Al Hamidis live. A family with anything but a typical American life. Uh, wow. Christine, <laughs> 18-year-old Fatima is preparing lunch for her brothers. Did you learn how you cook? I'm learning shwe shwe. Shwe shwe? Hey, I know how to make eggs. That's the best thing. She had to grow up fast when in March this year, the unimaginable happened. And this mother of five is found in a pool of blood by her 17-year-old daughter. But you took my mother away from me. You took my best friend away from me. Why? Shema al Awadi was violently beaten in the house they were living in at the time. She died in hospital three days later. Why? Why did you do that? She's a housewife. <laughs> She's innocent. She hasn't hurt anybody. The killer still hasn't been found. Fatima and her father, Kasim, are taking me to the scene of the murder. It was here that Shema Al Awadi was attacked at 11:15 a.m. on March 21st. And over here is where the glass is broken. See, there's still glass over here. This was all broken. Was all broken? Yeah, from top to bottom. She was hit inside there, right over there, where that thing is. The family believes someone broke in through this door. The house has since been sold and gutted for renovation. There is no trace of the terrible crime. The morning of the attack, Fatima was upstairs. I hear this glass breaking, but in my mind, I was thinking that it was some kind of plate or something, because in that time, she'd be cooking. So all I hear her is when I go downstairs, she's, lo she's like moaning in a low voice like of pain. So when I found her, she was on the floor on her face, and she was kind of drowned in her blood. And when I found her, I didn't think someone hit her. I thought she had like some kind of seizure or heart attack or it didn't it doesn't come to someone's mind that someone has just been killed. So when I found her, you know, I'm asking her what's wrong, but she doesn't reply. Shema had been repeatedly struck on the head, fracturing her skull in at least four places. She never regained consciousness. The only suggestion of a motive was a note found by police near Shaima. So I asked him, what did it say? And he just said, terrorist, and he just shook his head. He's like, it's ignorance. It's just as you guys are terrorists. And that's when it hit me, it's a hate crime. Because, I mean, obviously, it's racism. Just because we're from Iraq or whatever they, whatever they hate about us. As the family struggled to come to terms with what happened, the Iraqi community rallied around them. We want justice! We want justice! Fatima addressed the crowd with a message for the killer. We're not going to cry if that's what he wanted. We're not going to do that. We're not going to take off the scarf if that's what he wanted. That's not, we're not going to give him what he wants. Kazim shows me where he has stored his wife's belongings. Then I learned that the family received an earlier note calling them terrorists. It says, this is my country. Go back to your terrorists. Oh, 
you see? You were scared? Hmm? I was furious about it. I was mad. And I told my mom. I told her, I'm going to call the cops. They did, she, didn't, she didn't think it was a big deal. And I was going to call 911. And she told me, don't call the cops. The family says they have no enemies. But Kazim says his brother-in-law found a man in their yard. The city of Al Cajon has the second largest community of Iraqi migrants in America, after Michigan. It's a small piece of Iraq parked in the heart of California. Thousands settled here after the first Gulf War. There's tension there. There's definitely tension, and there's been tension for a long time. And, and I don't Well, Carlos is a reporter with the New York Times. He was one of the first journalists to report on Shayma al awadis Meda. It's, it's kind of a kind of a difficult place to settle several thousand refugees from a very different culture and a very different, um, you know, very different country. I mean, the kids grow up American, right? I mean, they grow up speaking American, watching, watching television, watching the same shows, playing the same video games, and and you know, they feel more they are. They, they, yeah. they feel they feel American now. Yeah. The, the older populations, I think that there's yeah. there's still a fair bit of, of not a lot of integration there. Anger of Ashima's mad spread quickly reaching Iraq. An offer was made by President Nouri Al Malik to fly Shayma's body back to the country she had fled in 1991. I have come to Samawa in Iraq to meet Shayma's sister, Miriam, who's staying with her father, a cleric. This is our house. It wasn't always like this. It was a mess. Like Shayma, she has lived in America since she was a girl, but returned to Iraq for her sister's funeral. Do you feel safe now in Iraq more than American? I'm back. They say America is a free country. Yes. But that's not what we saw. They say America lets you wear and be the person who you are. But that's not what we saw. My sister, she was in the airport. And there was this man with his hand. He passed by and he hit her so hard on the head. And um, to the point that she got dizzy and she was like, some guy just hit me. And like when he hit me, he grabbed my scarf and he kept trying to pull it. And apparently he let her hear a word or two. Go oh, back. This is a good country. She was telling me that she wanted to come back to Iraq. And we were making plans that we would come back to Nigeria. Back in the U.S., I meet Iraqi community leader Abu Firas. I am check your chest. One minute. Where is your heart? In this way or this way? This way? Are you sure? Okay, good. Wow. The music. Huh? <laughs> he has strong control of Al Kahun's Iraqi population, including the Al Hamidi family. And now there is a new aspect to this case, which has divided the community. It's kind of become a bit more of an intriguing kind of murder mystery at this point. As part of their investigation, the police obtained a search warrant for the family home. There's clearly a lot of internal conflict within that family, and certainly, you know, with the, the daughter and the complaints to the police and stuff like that, I mean, it's clearly a family that's been undergoing some, some stress. I want to ask the family about this stress. But community leader Abu Farah doesn't want that to happen. 
الغسيل مالنا على الحبال وتجيب وضع وحديث في بعيد في كل بعد عنا يعني مو نسوبنا هذا هذا اللي مريده احنا انتم تعتبرون نفسكم مجتمع عراقي او مجتمع امريكي؟ احنا مجتمع عراقي نبقى عراقيين الى مقطع النفس I am forced to meet Fatima in secret. What was your relationship with your mother? Well, my mom, she had me when she was 15. So basically, she's young. And <clears throat> we're basically closed, closed age. I mean, normal mother-daughter relationship, but we're more like two friends. The other David suggests a more complex relationship. It says, four months before her mother was murdered, Fatima was involved with the police. Fatima Alhimidi was contacted reference a call of two people possibly having sex in a car. Police contacted Fatima Alhimidi and a 21-year-old male, Ronak Jacob, in a parked car. It's not true. It's not true. No. And the cop that found us, we were sitting in the car and in that time, I was having family problems. We were sitting in the back seat, both of us. We were talking. I was crying. We were, I mean, he was just comforting, you know, being. So when the cop found us, it said that there was some kind of yeah. thing going on. Um, no, obviously, clothes was on. The clothes were on. Um, we're, he was sitting on the left, I was sitting on the right. I mean, it wasn't. And if it was, he would be arrested, right? He's over 18, I'm a minor. But no, we were just sitting down. Um, we were talking, having a conversation. And those who accuse should use their mind, not just talk without thinking. I mean, you know, so no. My mom came, she was mad. You know, but not because of anything, but she told me, next time you want to go out, be honest with me. According to the other David, later, as they drove. Fatima Ohimidi said, I love you, mom. Opened the vehicle door and jumped out while the vehicle was doing approximately 35 miles per hour. Police responded and Fatima was transported to the hospital with multiple injuries. The document claims Fatima told police that she jumped from the car because she was big in force to marry her cousin. Life is too short. People are wasting their time worrying about other people's lives when it's, it's not true. Fatima tells me that since the other David was publicly released, she's been accused of her mother's death by community members and even family. She says she's afraid and doesn't want to leave the house. People are looking at me like I'm some kind of killer or some kind of murder or whatever. I know I didn't do anything wrong. It's just messed up. People could have been there for me instead of accusing me like that. بنتي كذلك حالتها النفسية تعبت من القال والقيل وهي بريئة. Kazim, Shema's husband, is also mentioned in the Ever David. A relative of the victim had said that the victim was planning on divorcing her husband and moving to the state of Texas. A set of blank divorce papers were allegedly found in her car. راح اجابت ورقه من المحكمه وجدت تهديد على مود مصلحه خاصه ومصلحه عامه البيت هذا موجود بكل البيوت يصير انفصال. The El Cajon police have declined deadlines repeated requests for an interview. In a written response, they say they have no new information. They also say they are exploring all possibilities and have no suspects in the case. I am innocent and I miss her so much. But I'm sure she's in a better place now. While the family is desperately hoping that police will catch the killer in Iraq, Shema's sister, Maryam, thinks about what might have been. This land was uh, for Shema. She bought it. Um, her dream was uh, to build a house and to live next to us. Inshallah, God will make us strong enough to leave the seduction of America and come back to this land. The family plans a future in their homeland. 
but Fatima wants to stay in the U.S. I can't imagine me growing up, you know, getting married or having kids and she's not there. 